Hey, Newbie Dan here. I'm going to show you how I took this disorganized chaos of a mess and turned it into this much more organized, less chaotic mess. This isn't a how-to video. It's a this is how I did it video. <laughs> I just want to share some ideas that might help you tackle your mess. I'll also give you my new philosophy on which scrap wood to keep. I think it's actually pretty smart, and it adapts to your needs as they change over time. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. I recently signed up for Steve Ramsey's Powered Up course, which I've been blogging about daily on my website. I was starting the first project, which would end up being this shop cabinet, and I wanted to use some sheets of plywood that I'd had for way too long. Here's what I found. This is moisture damage on the bottom of the sheets. This is the only place I have in my garage to store wood, so I knew I had to get all the wood off the floor and away from the concrete edge. So I started tackling the daunting task by moving out all my lumber and scrap wood. And I cleaned up everything as much as I could. I made a crude model of my garage in SketchUp. Ah, who am I kidding? This rocks! It's got a transparent ceiling so we can look around. I've got my air filtration system and shop fan. I've even got my air conditioner and trash bins. I haven't modeled my tools and workbench yet, but I will someday. And I didn't model the floor tiles. Yeah, I know, slacker. Anyway, this is my lumber cubby hole, and it's really the only place I have to store wood. It used to be where my car door opened, but my car has been relegated to parking outside. My wife's car goes in the garage, of course. My first goal was to get everything off the floor. I started with a base made out of 2x4s using half lap joints. At least I think that's what you call these. <laughs> I added a plywood platform and 2x4 rails. The sheet goods have to lean against the wall, but I don't want them to warp, so I designed some angled braces that should help prevent warping. So I cut all the 2x4s. And trimmed the 2x4s. And notched the 2x4s. And finally, I was ready to assemble the 2x4s. Which, of course, didn't go smoothly, because I never get anything right the first time. <laughs> Look at me. I'm thinking, what the heck? Or something like that. Eventually, I fixed everything and put it all together with screws. Then I assembled the platform and rails and attached it to the base. I have these floor tiles left over from when we did the garage, so I cut them up to fit in the riser. You assemble them like jigsaw pieces, then whack them with a big mallet. Release that aggression! For the two tapered supports, I used a piece of plywood to make a quick jig. I've got a video on this if you want more information. And finally done! In a moment, I'll talk about raising up the lumber rack and adding a drawer. But before that, let's talk about the retention bar. I found out pretty quickly that when I removed a sheet from the back, everything in front tipped over and fell out. So I added this retention bar. I think of it like those bars and roller coasters that keep you in your seat. It's got a bungee cord on each side, and each leg has a hinge down here. This keeps it from going any further forward. It works surprisingly well. I need to add a face of some kind so short stock doesn't fall through. Okay, onto the pile of scrap. So how do you deal with this mess? I broke it down to four questions. Where am I going to store my scrap wood? This is not acceptable, and it's dangerous. How am I going to organize the scrap wood so I can find something when I need it? It's one thing to keep something, and quite another to find it. How do I prevent this mess from happening again? I'm talking about the real world me, not some version of me I wish I was. And last but not least, out of this big pile of scrap, how do I decide what to keep and what to toss? Believe it or not, for me at least, this ended up being way easier than I could have ever imagined once I answered the first three questions. There's really only one place for me to store my scrap wood, and that's in this cubby hole. So I decided to make a rolling drawer that goes under the lumber rack. Your solution will probably be different, but make sure it's easy to get to. And your solution needs to be a set size. Don't make a pile, because there's no limits to a pile. You need something that will tell you when you've reached your limit of scrap wood. So I figured out how high I could raise the lumber rack, added some legs, and built a drawer. It's got low-profile wheels that don't pivot, making it easy to roll it in and out. 
The key to organizing things is to ask yourself this question. When I need scrap wood, what do I look for? Or better yet, what categories of scrap wood do I look for? Now remember, my woodworking mostly involves projects and techniques I can make videos about, so my categories are probably a lot different than yours. But for me, my categories are smallish pieces, longer pieces that are still narrow-ish, more rectangular pieces, and finally, larger or odd-sized pieces. Anything that doesn't fit in these categories goes up in the lumber rack. I use scraps of pegboard for dividers held on by painter's tape, so it's easy to add another category or change things up. It's hard to find things if they're in a pile, so I decided to stand up all my smaller pieces. If I need more room, I stack similar pieces on top of each other. Notice I left a big empty section here? That's for question number three, how do I keep this mess from happening again? The problem is, when I'm working on a project, I know I'm not going to take the time to sort the scrap pieces. So instead, anything I don't throw out immediately, I toss in here. And then I can sort it all out later. Preferably in between projects, but more likely when it starts to overflow. And that's why it's good the space isn't any larger, because it'll force me to actually do it. So now for the big question. How did I sort through my big pile of scrap? You all know the fear. The moment I throw something out, I'll end up needing it. So I decided that, yep, that's a given. It's going to happen. I'll say it again. It's going to happen. But instead of seeing that as a disaster, I'm looking at it as an opportunity to see if I need to modify my categories or not. Maybe it's just a one-off, something that I'm really only likely to need this one time. Is that worth going back to a huge pile of scrap? Or maybe it's something I do actually need from time to time. If so, I'll add a new category. So like I said, it's not a disaster. It's an opportunity to prove or improve my categories. I'll tell you how it's worked out in a moment. So, armed with this plan, I went through all my scrap wood looking for pieces that fit in my categories. This is all I ended up keeping. The rest filled up a garbage bin. I didn't intentionally throw out this much. It just happened through the course of sorting the pieces. I either had pieces that didn't fit in the categories, or I realized I had enough of those pieces already. So have I regretted tossing anything? Yes, but not really, if that makes any sense. The only thing I wish I kept were some garbage pieces that I could use while setting the width or depth of a dado or rabbit or something like that. That's it. So I might add another category, or maybe I'll just leave a few garbage pieces in the unsorted section. Time will tell. In the meantime, I'm loving my new work area. I say new because it totally feels that way. Look at how much room I have. Unbelievable. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider leaving a comment. Check out the description for links to products seen in this video. Just scroll down, click Show More, and scroll down until you see the links. And if you like what I do here, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to ring that bell to get notified about new videos. Thanks!